Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS Inform. Once again, we are honored to have in the studio State Senator Mark Mesmer, representing District 48. Senator, welcome to the show. Great to be here as always on Fridays. Nice to be home for the weekend and, and uh, checking in with the folks on WJTS. Well, I, I don't want to say that nothing has happened, but it doesn't seem like a whole lot has happened in the House, and yet a whole lot has happened in the House. Oh yeah, this time of the this time of session, you know, you don't hear a lot of. I mean, I, I'll see issues in the news, you know, newspapers to talk about, you know, things that committees are passing. Mm -hmm. And really this time of the year is when House and Senate committees are, are you know, really thrashing through and, and, and having the, the public hearings on bills. And, you know, a lot of bills have passed, you know, out of committees in the House and Senate. We've, we've had final passage on about 40 bills already in the Senate. Then the next two weeks, we'll probably get through a couple hundred more. Uh, I mean, you know, but I mean, the first now that things are really starting to, you know, to to process out of the committees, you know, probably every committee we have about 25 committees, and and each of those committees each week probably moves, you know, four to five pieces of legislation. Um, so we'll see the calendar really start to get, you know, filled up over the next, you know, ne next Thursday we finish committee work, and the following Wednesday we'll wrap up you know, the, the first half of session. Now, when we talk here today, when, when we talk about something passed, we mean that it's, it has passed from the House, but it has not passed. Until the, the House and Senate both have to pass okay. the same exact language on a bill. So like we'll have Senate bills, they'll have House bills, and, and in a couple weeks, you know, activity on those will be done in, you know, for the, you know, for the House of Origin. And then starting in February, we'll hear bills in the Senate that passed in the House and they'll here are Senate bills that you know that we passed. They have to go through them again, take more input, and that some of them get changed. Some of them just you know you know just move right on through. Um, but I had I had three bills of mine that I was going to hear either this week or next week. And when I saw the House versions of those bills that I've been working with you know the House authors, when I saw those bills passed you know this week and next week I pulled those bills off of my agenda because there's really no use in having the same bill moving in the House and the Senate, and then in the second half of session have to be chasing, you know, mm -hmm. sure. two bills that do the exact same thing. So uh, my Airbnb bill that I've got authored, my roommate and the House author of, of that bill, uh, his passed on Monday, 74 to 19. So it passed, last year they, they had 50 votes and you need 51 to pass it. So they, they got stalled out on not having a 51, you know, vote passage on, on the bill last year. We cleaned it up a lot, took a lot of input over the summer study committee and got it, got it narrowed down to a pretty tight, you know, uh, if it's my home, I do what I want. If it's not, you know, then the local government can do some regulations. That's the, you know, the crux of what the bill does. And so I was going to hear that this week. I took it off the calendar and, and then I had another bill I was going to hear next week on uh, not allowing uh, mandated sprinklers in homes. That bill passed in the House um, earlier this week, and, and Representative Fry is sending me that one, so don't need to move it. And the chiropractic bill will be up for final passage on Monday, but it's in, it's in pretty good shape. It came out of committee unanimously, um, so I'm working with Representative Beimer on that one, and we'll take that one in the second half. So well, it makes sense not to waste time. Don't waste the time. Right. I mean, short sessions just I mean, sometimes a long session you might do that just to make sure something doesn't stall out in the second half, but those bills are, you know, all have good, good steam and, and are moving along quickly. Um, so you'll just keep that, just, just keep, keep them moving. Yep, good. yep. Now, a lot of discussion uh, in the world uh, about opioids, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. there has been some action on, on bills there. Now, what has happened in yeah, the what, One of the governor's bills that he had, you know, part of his agenda this year was, you know, part of the opioid crisis, which is not only in Indiana, it's mm -hmm. nationwide. Uh, one of the one of the key elements of that is to, you know, stopping the, the you know, the doctor shopping or doctor hop, whatever, doctor shopping, okay. hopping from doctor to doctor to get multiple prescriptions, you know, for the same, you know, same patient. Uh, and we have a technology system called Inspect, you know, that, that's being utilized by about half of the doctors. Uh, you know, half of the prescriptions, you know, patients run through that, half don't. So you really have a non-functioning you know, system. We do that for pseudoephedrine, uh, and it's instantaneous. When you buy pseudoephedrine, it tracks, you know, how, how much you've bought that month, how much you've bought for the year, and it's instantaneous, and it's at every retail outlet that sells pseudoephedrine. 
If they're going to sell it, they have to, they have to comply with that. The uh, inspect system on opioids, we only have, only have about half the doctors participating in that that prescribe. So it really doesn't give you any, I mean, so the governor's, uh, and we gave him funding last year, you know, for this year and next year in the budget to fund whatever opioid, you know, addiction uh, programs, processes, you know, that, you know, we, and we gave him a list of multiple things that his dr drugs are is looking at. This is one that they, I mean, it's obvious to me, you, you stop the overprescription, you're going to, you're going to dry up, you know, the access to the, to the product, you're going to, you know, and, and last year we passed limits on, you know, how much, you know, on, on initial prescription, you know, a, a patient could get on their first prescription of opioids. You know, that, I mean, all of those things trying to cut down the, the black market availability of opioids to, you know, just to try to stop new people from getting addicted. You know, we've got treatment programs we're initiating, you know, part of last year's budget, you know, part of this year's uh, task force implementation is getting, getting more treatment options available for people who are addicted. You know, but a, you know, a big stop uh, gap thing we've got to do is, is just limit how much of that uh, you know, gets gets out on the street to begin with. Well, it's hard for me to imagine. I can, Thirty years ago, I could imagine it, but today, the tech, why we wouldn't be doing yeah, that? Is there a cost to doctors to be on this program? Um, I think I think it's mainly the the cost to the state to set the technology up. Okay. You know, you know, I mean that that's and, and the governor's got money to do that. Senate Bill uh, two twenty one, I believe, is the bill that or two twenty okay. that that passed out of the Senate yesterday, forty seven to one. We had one, one person absent and, and one person whose spot uh, will be filled next week, you know, from Senator Hirschman. Uh, so, but one person who voted against said, she voted, said, I don't think the governor's going to fund this thing, so I'm still voting no. Well, he does have the ability to fund it. Uh, the money is there. You know, the, the requirement that all doctors that prescribe opioids, you know, needs to be there just to, just to limit that black market availability of the opioids. Well, I mean, I, part, part of the problem, one of the solutions that has to get done. I guess if you need opioids, I didn't think of being that creative to go to different doctors. Mm -hmm. but, and, and you know, it's, you can't blame the doctors. They don't know what doctors no. they've been to, but now that we're going to have a system in place, that will stop it, that. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, probably one of the... Well, wait a minute. Oh, I oh, say sorry. now that we have it in, in oh. place, we don't, right? Because it, the, the Senate has passed it, now it, it goes to the it House. It has to go to the House. Okay. But being that it's the governor's agenda bill, it passed the Senate you know, with only one no vote. I mean, there's really no reason not to, to move it. So, but it does have to pass in the House mm -hmm. and then, then go to the governor for signature. Okay. So, but they all have to do that process. Now, we have had years when we expedited bills a couple of times where we actually passed a bill you know, in the Senate or the House the first week of session, first week and a half, transferred it to the other, you know, to the other chamber right away. I think Super Bowl year one in 2012, we had one dealing with um, human trafficking, mm -hmm. and right. that one we expedited through and got done. You know, so the law enforcement would have better, uh, you know, better tools, you know, to work with, you know, for the you know Super Bowl time of the year, and you know, the human trafficking and, and sex exploitation is a is a big problem with any large venue events like that. But there's just a, there's riffraff that you know follow those events around. Uh, we've had occasional times you know where we have expedited bills, you know that. And gotten them done in, in about two weeks. So, so if the if the governor gets it and signs it, mm -hmm. how soon would it become law? It, it would go into effect upon passage. Oh, immediately. Yeah. Okay, it's not one of those that July first it uh, starts. You, a lot of times you can set a July first, or maybe you want to give you know maybe a government agency you know sometimes it's January first the following year. Sometimes we give them a little more time mm -hmm. to to get you know process, processes in place. But this is one where you know I mean it'll the governor will will take it and and. You know, started getting getting the hardware and the software, you know, out, you know, to you know to all medical facilities and, you know, all you know, even you know, rural small town doctors will have to have that that capability connected to their doctor's office. Okay. No, and I didn't mean to stop you. No, no. Good points. Yeah. All right. The the other bill that we you know had to do some immediate you know need to address so we get money to the schools you know this year, school enrollment was up. 6,000 or so students across the state, you know, out of, out of over a million kids, that's, you know, that's not a big percentage, but when you break that down and, and, and you've got to deal with the cost of those, you know, those kids, you know, across every school corporation, uh, Senate Bill uh, 189 uh, passed out of the Senate unanimously this week. It'll go to the House and it's going to, it's going to increase the funding 
uh, it'll it'll supplement about twenty five million dollars to all, you know to all the schools. It'll be on a per student, you know that that additional enrollment over our prior year's budget. I mean that'll get rolled out to every every school will get, you know, more money per kid, you know, to to help pick up the cost of those extra students that that showed up. Okay. And whether I mean you know they could have showed up from families who who's you know you know the family moved here to get new jobs that. I mean, you, we take the data from the superintendents. They're doing the best guess they can based on who they know is living in their school corporation now. Yeah, if they had five or 10 or 20 new people show up, you, know, you, don't, you don't always know where they came from, but you take that times hundreds of school corporations and- That's a lot of numbers. It adds up a lot of, mm -hmm. adds up quickly. So rather than have them absorb those students for no extra money, it's a good thing we have budget surpluses. We've been criticized you know, in years past. Why not spend that surplus down? Why not spend it? Well, number one, you don't know when a downturn in the economy is going to happen. We've had them in 2000. We had it in 2008, you know, eight, nine. I mean, those downturns hit. If you don't have surplus funds on hand, you can't absorb it. In a case like this, you know, we've got reserve funds available, you know, to pay out. And, and, and we don't, didn't really want to open up the entire budget, but when we see a, a, you know, a quick need we need to respond to, mm -hmm. you know, we've got the resources to do it. So that was, that was good. Um, and, I, and I did have the uh, S Senate Bill 1 that came through the Senate that, that I voted for this week. Uh, Sunday sales of alcohol mm -hmm. passed in the, I think the House and the Senate both have identical bills moving on that issue. I, w I, I would have anticipated they would have just moved one or the other, but it has passed in both chambers. And, but one or the other, you know, either the House or Senate will have to adopt that again, you know, for, for that to go. And that, that, that's a July 1 effective okay. date on that one. So I would thoroughly anticipate uh, come July 1 from noon to 8, you know, that any retail outlet that, that currently sells alcohol will, will have uh, alcohol sales available. Is it too late right now for any bill to just, for me to call you and say, there's a bill that we need, can we get this passed through? Is it really, is it too late for that? Well, I would say the, 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 the general answer is yes, but okay. I do also know the House and Senate, you know, the President Pro Tem and, and the House Speaker file what they call vehicle bills. I mean, if somebody would actually look on, you know, the in.gov, you know, slash legislative website, and you looked at the bill numbers, you would see some of them taken out and they say vehicle bill. My first year here, I thought, why do we have so many, you know, thing called vehicle bill? What is that? Well, a vehicle bill is, you know, now we've got about, a, I mean, in reality, you've got a, a few days. I mean, if there's something that would come, you know, a pressing need that would need to be addressed, those vehicle bills, I mean, they could file, you know, a, a, you know the, the content of that bill, and, and, and it could still have, you've still got one more week of hearings. Now, it, it really can't be something with a budgetary impact, but if it's a policy issue you wanna, you wanna move. It's not impossible, it's, it's rare. I mean, they take out about 10 numbers, I think, in, in the House and Senate. Some years they don't move any, but I, I've seen a bill or, or two pop up uh, since I've been there where they've used one of those vehicle bills to move something that really came to the, you know, to the uh, a pressing need, you know, once session had started. Typically, after about the first week of session, all the bills that are going to be filed are filed. And we've only got about, you know, one more week of committee hearing time. So it's probably unlikely that anything new, you know, would pop up, you know, but there are mechanisms built, you know, to, to handle those. Mm -hmm. Now, after next week, when, when the first half of session is done, then even those vehicle bill opportunities you know, go away because we couldn't start a Senate bill the second half of session, or they couldn't start a House bill second half of session. Then you bring them up next year. Next year. Okay. Uh, now we've got a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've done your survey, and we mm -hmm. talked about your survey a little bit last week, but now you've got the final results. And has anything changed? Well, everything really stayed almost identical on the you know from the online only uh, responses to the you know online and mailed combined. And the one that, the, on the online survey, the Sunday sales had a 60-40 approval. Mm -hmm. After we incorporated all of the, the mailed-in you know, uh, surveys, it came out 50.2 uh, opposed to 49.8 uh, in support. Really? Uh, and, and I've polled that thing probably five times in the last 10 years, and every time it comes out about a 50-50 issue. Hmm. So it's, it's nice when you get a, you know, a spread on an issue you know, for or against something. You know, it makes it easy. It makes, it yeah. makes it so right. when you get one that's 50-50, and it's been 50-50. I don't think I've ever seen it more than 
you know, more than, you know, hardly any more than 50, I mean, sometimes it's been 50% for, 40%, you know, opposed, and 10% undecided, or 45, 45, I mean, it, it, but it has never moved out of that window, and. But this year, it looks like it's not it, even going to become an issue anymore because it's it, going to pass. It, it looks like this year it'll pass. Now, I did have one on, on, you know, do we need to segregate, you know, alcohol into, into certain areas of the store. That one came out about a 50-50 issue. But I don't know, there's a house bill that, that talk, is gonna talk about tightening up alcohol display rules. You know, I'm not sure if that's gonna, an issue that's gonna move or not. Uh, Representative Smaltz is, is the author of that bill. You know, when it comes over to the Senate, you know, wh whether that stays in its final form or not. But I think there is one that would require, you know, anybody that, that, that's a, any clerks would have to be 21, would have to, if they're gonna, you know, if they're gonna sell the alcohol at their, I mean, they would have to be licensed like, you know, bartenders and package store owners, you know, need to be. Uh, there, there's some other tightening up of alcohol, you know, rules for retail outlets, but that's in a separate standalone bill. So we'll see what comes out of that. And I guess in years to come, we may see things develop mm -hmm. uh, that nobody foresaw and say, well, we need oh, a new bill that controls this part of it. Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. I mean, most of the things that we deal with are because, you know, you know changes in society or changes in technology and, and, you know, things that you have to do to adapt and, and deal with it. Well, a lot of, like the opioid, mm -hmm. now that we have that change in technology to where doctors can quickly, easily find right. out if they've seen other doctors. Oh, yes. And so you can then try and say, hey, you, you've already yeah. got three prescriptions for opioids. You don't get any more. Right. Yeah. yeah. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that would have been... Couldn't have done. Physically impossible yeah. to do. Now, now we now, now that we can. Okay. Well, Senator, Thanks. thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. And we do want to remind folks uh, tomorrow morning, Saturday morning at nine, nine o'clock mm -hmm. until ten thirty, it's the legislative breakfast with the Jasper Chamber of Commerce at Vincennes University Jasper in the CTIM building. That's the nice auditorium or theater the, type yeah, building. Yeah, the new technology building. And you will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think Erin Houchin may I be there. I think so. I didn't confirm with her this week before we left town, but I think both the representatives, uh, Representative uh, Lindauer uh, and uh, Bartle, Bar yeah, will be there. Will be there. Uh, so. It's, it's a chance to hear them talk about things that they've been working on and a chance for you to ask questions as mm -hmm. well. But please limit your questions to, to make it short and not so much make a statement. Yeah, and yeah, try to make, actually ask a question. Ask a question right, without making a statement. Yeah. All right, and, well. And, and try to keep it to issues that are before the General Assembly, if you can. I mean, there's, there's always, you know. Because an hour and a half is not a lot of time. No, right. Right. Well, look forward to Thanks. seeing you tomorrow. I'll Great. be there. Thank you, right. Bill. Thank you for watching WJTS Inform. We want to thank our guest, State Senator Mark Mesmer, representing District 48. Thank you for watching. We're local people watching local people, 18 WJTS.